cameras up. The sound is up, so hopefully the audio is working. Can you hear Eddie? Can you hear? Can you hear me? I don't know. I can't can you hear Andrew? Can you hear Eddie? Let's hopefully find out. So I know we'll have a few people watching soon. We uh, have Elliot joining in a minute. So hopefully Elliot um, can let us know if the audio is good. We're using a cordless mic. I only brought one because I wasn't planning on using it. So uh, next time we'll have two or three or four. Um, cool. Brilliant. The audio is working. I did a quick test. That's good. And what we're going to do, I'm going to write on the board, although I've got a trap nerve in my back, so I can barely stand up. Ouch. Uh, and my handwriting is the worst. I'm probably not the best person to do this, but... Go on holiday, injure yourself, then come back. True. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a website, an open source. So we're going to be doing this off the Code Mortals account. So we have open the source organization. Oh, you should be talking to me. Oh, sorry, I'll, I'll grab. So whilst Eddie's just writing there, so I... For those that uh, have obviously been on Eddie's channel a few times before, I've been with him a few times now on the, on the channel doing live streams. We've been talking to recruiters and so forth. Um, I suppose you could say we're going to try taking things to the next level a little bit. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, Is scary times. Level? The next level, we're going up, yeah? Yeah. Uh, and by that, we have started an organisation that we are calling Code Mortals. Uh, we've already got a number of people up on our so if you do want to join us on Slack, I'm sure we can arrange for that as well. Um, but the idea being we want to help educate a few people on uh, best practices, open source, and build a community around all of that, really. Um, so there'll be more of these streams. We have a YouTube channel. We were going to be using it this evening, but it turns out that YouTube required us to validate a phone number that we hadn't done. So that was our mistake there. Uh, so we have to wait 24 hours in perjury until we can get going with that. But yeah, the uh, website we're going to be building will be the Code Mortals website. And yeah, for the, uh, for the website, we are going to do just a couple of simple things to get us started. Normally, if you're going to build a simple website, you would not be using a framework. You'll probably be writing stuff with vanilla JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and so forth. However, we're actually going to use Angular to build this website. Uh, the reason being that in the future we will probably extend it to have a lot more functionality, but also we can just talk a bit about Angular and the framework as well while we're doing this. Uh, if we're JavaScript, HTML, CSS, that's the sort of thing that most people have probably heard elsewhere quite frequently. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be using Angular. We're going to build up a simple website to start with, and the main focus of this stream will be around some of the best practices to deploy and host that back on to GitHub pages. So or it will Firebase. be... You're really tempted to use Firebase now. Yeah, because we're, they, when we put the database behind it, we can just get a Firebase and do some real-time communication. Or we can move it later. Which I, it's we'll, we'll, we'll I'm easy. Yeah. We'll discuss that as we go through the stream. So could be onto GitHub pages, could be onto Firebase. You get the audience to, to view and see what they think yeah. as well. But yeah, that's going to be the aim, is to just get the basics in place and show that set up. And uh, yeah, Eddie will probably be doing most of the talking for the rest of the stream because he's put me in front of the computer to do the coding. Oh Although I will try and do a bit of a switch with him later. He's not ready for that yet, though. <laughs> Just stop working out. It's really good. Uh, you're getting some love of the chat, by the way. Oh, am I? So chill. <laughs> <laughs> Relax. Taking it easy, yeah. They are w watching what Eddie's writing on the board, wondering what's he going to say that we're going to be doing. Let's swap. Yeah. My handwriting's terrible, so that took me like five minutes to write open source. I don't even know if people can read that. You've got me doing the, the, the coding, you've got me doing the screen. I'm gonna say, hey, let's give some shout outs. You've got Mesh. Hey, Mesh, thanks for, thanks for joining. Uh, who else have we got? Uh, I said hi to Elliot already. Um, it's really great to have Elliot here. Thanks for all your support on Code Mortals. We've got Novas and we've got Heart as well, which is freaking awesome. So from two people, which is great. We, we, we wanna share the coding and tech love. And we've got Tanya hiding in the corner, um, who's taking lots of photos, which is great. Uh, and Tanya, say hi. Hi. And um, she's getting into TypeScript, coming from a Java background. It should be easy for her. She, she likes something called React. I think that's, you know, I don't know what that is for kids, I think. Um, don't throw anything at me. <laughs> so... Um, Andrew's handwriting, you can see, is a lot better. But today, we want to try and do like a steel thread going um, like a hello world all the way to the deployment so we can show you setting up uh, an Angular project, which probably a lot of you already know. 
but then we want to add Cypress to it so that it's got automated testing. You'll see it drive the browser. We will share the computer screen so you can see it. And then we want to also then put that on CI so it builds and runs the tests and then also deploy it to GitHub pages or to a Firebase. We're going to have a punch up and fight over that in a minute. And this is overkill for a kind of a simple website, but we plan to build on it later on. So that, that's why we're going for that. And um, yeah, and then we, once we've got that still thread going through, we can keep adding to it, keep building to it, and, and improving it, and, and doing a lot more. So uh, watch out, Tanya's sneaking through. Um, how's the sound, everyone? How's the video? We, we've got a slightly different setup to, to last time. So just interested to know how, how you think the, the video and the audio is. I'm just going to have a look in the chat as well. Who else have we got? Stream is very laggy, uh, Novaz says. Anyone else having that problem? So I'm hoping it's just the one person rather than everybody. Uh, we I think we're pushing it out at 1080p. Okay. I don't know if that's... It shouldn't be too bad at 80 We have... Ta I see Tanya <laughs> hiding in the video <laughs> as you go past. Um, and uh, if anyone can let us know how the video and audio is. And uh, Elliot says, hi, Tanya. And who else do we have? We have... Akesh saying hi, hope I pronounced that correctly. Kelton, um, uh, Meshfin is from Helsinki, awesome. And uh, you can't read anything on the whiteboard. Okay, Meshfin, thanks for the honesty on that. I'll, I'll read it out in a second. It's the green pen. It's just um, notes. It, it's notes for us. Let's turn off the light and see. Oh, wrong light. Maybe this one. Too many buttons, I'm just pressing all of them. How's that one? Hope that's better. I can, you're right, that, that light in the top does look yeah. awful. So remove that. So let me, I, can, I can talk through this. So we're going to do a lot of open source today, and I want all of you to contribute to open source. Be it raising an issue, it's still a contribution. Be it um, commenting on a pull request, because we will do everything via pull request, even if Andrew's doing the work. Um, actually, especially if Andrew's doing the work, we definitely want to... Um, review it so we want to get your feedback even just practice right just put a comment if you like the way something is done just put in saying you know thumbs up like the way this is done because that will be great don't worry about getting in the stream it's fine everyone knows you're here uh and um so uh mesh finn hopefully i'm pronouncing your name right says it's better with uh with that light off so that's good uh it's it's not laggy as much it just keeps freezing when when you move fast okay i'll try not to move so fast glad the audio is great brilliant okay we're going to get more microphones for next time so we can have some awesome audio so what it says on the board open source we're all going to do that not just us you as well you are going to contribute to open source Code Mortals uh, GitHub organization. We will send a link, share a link in the chat shortly. RP is written Angular plus TypeScript. Uh, TypeScript is freaking awesome. Even Tanya, as a React fan, says TypeScript is pretty good. Actually, do you want my opinion on that? Yes, please. As long as it's so good. No, <laughs> it is good. So I'm not a fan of React and TypeScript, but I'm doing uh, using TypeScript for some APIs I'm building. Oh, uh, okay, cool. Yeah, so you're not a fan of React. We understand. React is not very good. Angular is better, right? No? That's fighting talk. Fighting talk. <laughs> um, and then we're going to do some GitHub. We're going to just show you some GitHub. You've probably all seen it before, but we're going to, you know, create issues, maybe use the project board so you can know how that looks like Trello and drag things across. Uh, our commits will have the uh, GitHub issue number in it, so our commits are tied to the issue. And, and we'll close the issue via the pull request as well. We'll show you some tricks around that. Any questions, you jump in. Cypress is probably one you might not have seen. So Cypress will um, do the automated test. It will drive the browser. We'll use Cypress and Cucumber. We didn't write Cucumber on there. No, no, I think we'll talk about Cucumber when we get to it. Okay, we'll talk about Cucumber when we get to it. Or Andrew was just saying, because we didn't have the mic, I repeated no, it. We need multiple mics. I have multiple mics. Didn't bring it. I bought a cable. Well, we were expecting some different mic, weren't we? But True. unfortunately, these lovely Apple Mac machines I don't have USB ports anymore and we only have one <laughs> converter for a USB and that's driving the camera that's true oh Elliot has just said the the reflection off the TV screen that we're not using is causing some bad reflection which is a good bottom, bottom point screen, let me turn this off I press something off yeah cool hopefully that's better and uh, Cypress with cucumber so cucumber allows us to write gherkin which is kind of given when then so given I'm on the home page when I click login uh, then I see the login form something to that effect and we're going to do deployments github pages of firebase what do you think please write in the chat what you think is best and we're going to use circle not travis 
we can fight about that in a minute as well. What do you prefer? Really? I'm outnumbered. There are certain things about circle that I just find it easier to get along. But like the the context, so you can, as an owner, you can manage all your environment variables at the project level. They can manage the things that are more specific to them. So you just bit better protection, security, and some of those things. That Travis is great, I guess, for the open source. I say it's like the, the cheap. I won't say cheap version. It's still good. But how do I how do I phrase it? It's. It's just not developed as much over the years, I guess. Yeah. People haven't True. invested as heavily into it. I think Circle, they've invested very heavily into yeah. everything on it. Yeah. Uh, and Travis, yeah, it's got something that works. It's great. does what it says on the tin. But, yeah, they need to do a bit more work. Cool. Okay, Tanya, thank you bye very bye. much. Good luck with the stream. Good luck. Thank you. Luck. Uh, everyone say bye to Tanya. Bye. And, and encourage her to... Uh, She's got an awesome camera. I encourage her. She goes to lots of great events. I encourage her to vlog some of her okay, events. One event this year and that was today. And it was a great event. It was a two-day event, so you need to vlog it. So you can join us for a longer stream sometime in the future, right? Yes. Yes, yes, let me know. And I'll keep an eye on the chat for you. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Okay, so let's get started. So, Andrew, that doesn't look like VS Code. Uh, oh, no, Andy won't be able to get out. Let me go help her get out. out. No, the one downstairs you can't. Yeah, that shouldn't be locked yet. It will be. There'll be people going, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I've got to type, talk, and do everything. Okay, no problem. But I, I can run this on my own. <laughs> okay, good. So, you're going to put with me from here. We will swap over to my screen, and we will get things kicked off, and Eddie can catch up when he gets back. So, I'm just going to change the screen up to my desktop. And I'm going to open up my terminal window. This is where things get interesting. I'm going to put the mic down on the table, and hopefully it won't tap away. So I will look at the chat as well. If it does, jump around, let me know, and I will try and change how I've got the mic. Right, so the first thing I need to do, so as Eddie mentioned, we have on GitHub a project, codemortals.github.io. The reason for the name being that way is so that if we do use GitHub pages, GitHub will promote this as the default page for Codemortals. What I need to start by doing is just cloning the repository, though. So on GitHub, there's a nice clone button. I can just grab the copy from that. And on my machine, I shall do a git clone with a URL. Now, I do have SSH keys set up and GC, um, GPG keys set up. So everything you do gets validated and verified and so forth by Tanya Yadden. Unfortunately, the chat lags behind. Tanya has left the room a moment ago. But uh, we will pass on. In fact, I seem to keep an eye on the chat anyway, so she'll probably say hi. Okay, so that has cloned. If I look now, I should be able to see on here Code Mortals GitHub IO project, and I can go into that. Now, for any Angular project, if you have or haven't worked on Angular, you do need to have the CLI installed. Uh, I should have it installed globally. So if, to install it, you would just do an npm install global. So npm i global, and then for at Angular, Ooh. Angular slash CLI. Because I can't hold a mic and type with two hands. I'll buy, I'll buy some mic stand. I'm back, everyone. Don't worry. Cool. Did you miss me? Okay, so, yeah. First thing to do is make sure you're installed with the Angular CLI. So, npm install global, Angular, at Angular, has slash CLI. We'll install the latest version. It probably hasn't changed anything for me, so I'm probably up to date. Um, but from there, you can just type ng new. Um, uh, did you see uh, Elliot's comment about making it a bit bigger? Oh, uh, sorry, that's probably only just come in two moments ago. So yeah, I can make the text bigger. There we go. In fact, I'll clear the other stuff that we've been typing first. Uh, now, when you type ng new, it will create a directory normally. So I'm just going to do this. What would you like to name the workspace? I can't. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to. I'm going to just change this very slightly. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to. Thinking? No, I might let me do it if I do NG new. Normally, well, because we've already got a repository up on GitHub, uh, I've always, whenever I've started a new Angular project, yeah. done the NG new from local and then pushed it up to a new repository. But we've already got an existing repository. So I'm going to try and see what happens if I do an NG new and just type in the project so that hopefully it reads the well, correctly. While you're doing that, I think you can also put the flag on there to put the directories. You can put a dot or something. But while you're doing that, I'm going to share the link to the GitHub project so people can you know raise issues um, let's get people contributing you know who who wants to who wants to contribute 
open source today. And raising an issue counts. Oh, I can put the logo on the, you can't see my screen, I'm really sorry, but I wanna put the logo on the GitHub org and I'll share the GitHub org first. So therefore you can see the logo appear yeah, as yeah, well. So just to say, I am gonna pick SCSS. There are a few options available for your preference when it comes to writing CSS. But SCSS is the one that I've been using probably for the last couple of years since it took over from SAS and less, I guess I haven't used that in a while. So as you see the options, you can see what I'm selecting whilst Eddie is talking. Um, yeah, I think we might get upset with me for that. There's already a folder that exists. Okay, what I'll do is I'm gonna do the same thing again, but I'm just gonna move all the files that it creates over afterwards. So I'm just gonna tweak the code more towards right now. It wouldn't be a live demo if just shit didn't went wrong, you know, and you know, we missed, had the wrong mic. We had didn't have the right adapters. Hopefully this is it right now. It's gonna be plain it's sailing, enough. right? It's easy enough. It was a good experiment because I've never actually tried to do that before. Not if I have, it's probably been a few years ago now. Uh, I have just updated the logo on the GitHub organization. So if you do, if you have gone to the link and to the GitHub organization, if you refresh the page, you'll see our mascot. We're working on the logo at the moment. Uh, and we were gonna stream about that, but it's not so technical, so we thought we, we wouldn't. But if you would like to see that, let us know, and we're more than happy to share another time. Uh, to, uh, got some feedback. Terminal font size is still small. Um, see, uh, I think, just using the terminal. Okay, make it bigger. Make your font size a couple more. Do it. So hopefully that's good enough. Right. Okay, so you can see I've got two fonts. I've just created the new Angular project into a Code Mortals folder, and I've got my cloned GitHub folder below. So what I'm going to do because I want to move everything across. I'm ooh, hello, CD Code Mortals. That'll do. Um, so these are all the files that Angular has created. Uh, it sets up various tests and things for me. We're actually not going to be using the Angular frameworks for any of the testing side. We will set things up with Cypress, uh, but it has configured everything for us. Um, and I'm going to probably start with just a basic setup for Cypress as well, rather than trying to integrate anything with the CLI for this. So from here, what I can do is just move it all over. So I'm just going to say move. Which you shouldn't have to do, you shouldn't have to move it because we already got an existing project, which I don't think's got anything in it really. Um, if you go to, yeah, it's pretty uh, pretty simple, I think. I'm just gonna open it up on GitHub. Do have a look yourself on GitHub as well. It's just a readme and a license file. So that's why um, we have to move it over, but you won't have to. And it's gonna get more interesting. I saw in the chat, people ha some people haven't done um, CI before, so it's gonna get interesting when we do that. It's seven o'clock. I think we can get quite a bit done in the next hour as long as we don't have any more challenges. But you know, there's two of us here and there's I think quite a few of you out there between us, we will figure it out, don't worry. I'm not worried, hopefully you're not worried. Have so you broken it? I've moved everything over. What you'll see is I did leave the git, the .git file that Angular created because Angular sets it up assuming you're gonna use git, hence it asked me for my GPG key a minute ago. Um, but I'm not, because we've got another git project, we don't need the git file that it put there. We can do a new commit, uh, which I will do now. So if I do a git, status on this folder, you will see all the files that have been added by Angular. And what we can just do before I add those is let's do, um, let's have npm get set up with this, right? So I'm doing npm start. And just check that Angular boots up a website for us, make sure that it's happy. And what's always really good is to commit when you've just built, just created the project. Therefore you've got kind of like initial project starts, when you make changes, if anything goes wrong, you can always go back quite easily to a, a safe state. So Andrew has just started the project with npm start, um, which if you look in the package.json will tell you what the command, the command that it runs. And you can see on his screen, we have an Angular project. Looks yeah. good, done, yeah. let's all go home, let's, let's go, it's finished. Um, okay, not quite. So that's, what that, that's your basic project. Uh, Angular just gives you a very simple page with the Angular set logo on there, the name of what we call the project. So when we did the new, it's just used that to title it with. And just some simple links for those that are new to it. Your thing is quite small in the window. I've just, I've just realized that it's... Yeah. Oh, interesting. It's only three quarters of the screen. Oh, interesting. Okay. It's because you resized going after going OBS. Could be. I'm going to go... Oh, you can't change that now. Don't know if you can. Okay, um, I can. While you're playing with that, I can dance around. Okay, Andrew's playing with OBS, which is our streaming software, uh, Open Broadcasting Studio, and we're having some more teething issues. So thanks all for bearing with us. If you could close your trays and uh, put your seats in the upright position, so we can get ready for takeoff. That's the expression, right? 
Um, so, what else are we going to talk about? Why Andrew's just having having a play and see, uh, trying to trying to make the the size of the fonts bigger, not just for each window, but the whole window to take the page. Sounds good. And uh, yeah, I'm looking at the live stream on my computer and I can see that the whiteboard's quite quite difficult to read. So next time we will bring uh, a black pen, which I think will be easier to, to read. Maybe try a different room. We picked this room because it's uh, kind of a it's small size. Have you done that? Uh, Shall we have a look? Hopefully when update some of the screens, we are about 20 seconds behind, I think, on what we can actually see coming through the feed. If you have any questions at any point, please do write it in the chat and we'll try and answer. Um, this 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 uh, stream we're focusing on uh, open source, Angular, Cypress, Cucumber, CI, CD. If you don't know what those are, do shout in the in the chat, and I'll give you a brief overview. But we really want to give you a real demo in uh, on the on the shared screen. So, so what I can see now is all the files that Angular has created. I've just done a Git add all, but what I've realised is we haven't actually created any issues yet. So we need to go on to GitHub and put oh, yes. issues. On. Wait, wait. Will someone create some issues for us? We need one which is create, an, and don't forget, creating an issue counts as your open source contribution. It gives you that green yeah, tile. Pop the first one in for just creating the Angular project. Okay. And then if you want to talk and add some more issues to say what else we're going to do. So the Cypress okay. stuff, and you can add those. You can get people to add those ones just so I can get the initial commit moving and we're not paused too much on the coding side. So yeah, I will put the first issue in. And I'm just going to call this literally initialize, initialize the project using Angular, I'm going to say Angular 8 because we're on Angular 8 today. Angular 8 for anyone that uh, does follow Angular only came out a couple of weeks ago now. Not long, pretty fresh off the uh, off the developers over at Google. Um, we could talk about the features that it brings, but let's focus on building this right yeah. now. I'm going to assign myself I'm going to add a label. We haven't, we haven't sorted our labels out on this project yet. Normally I, uh, I do change the labels that GitHub gives you by default. Um, so actually, I'm not going to label this for now. We can go and sort labels out. In fact, maybe we that's something you want to look at. I can do that while you're while you're uh, coding. I can sort out labels, uh, milestones, and projects, and I'll set that out, and then you can share it on on yours and see. Cool. So what you'll see is, uh, as I've created that, it's given me an issue number, issue 34. So right now, I'm actually on the master branch. If I was to do a git state, uh, actually, I've already done one. Um, I can see I'm on the master branch. What we should really do on GitHub is protect that master branch because I shouldn't really be pushing into it. So I'm just going to go back to GitHub. And over here, we can go to the settings. You're not showing a screen. Oh, am I not? I thought I was. Sorry, folks. Oh, no. We've just, I've just realized we're not showing the screen. So um, we will uh, fix that problem right now. What did, we, what did we miss? So the thing you missed was I created an issue. So over in the issues, I went new issue. Right, it's still, it's, oh, it hasn't come through yet, but I'm guessing you're yeah, sharing it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. When new issue, and I've just created this new issue, and I've just called it Initialized Project using Angular 8. And that has given me an issue number, issue 34. Now, what I was saying is that uh, I'm on the master branch right now, and that's not really good. I shouldn't be committing straight to the master branch. If it was me on my own, maybe I'd accept doing it. No. Even then, I try not to do it. So I can see arguments for it, but yes, best practice-wise, no. Don't commit direct to your master branch. Never do it, even if it's your own project. Just, just don't do it. I mean, we all do that. I think I'm doing it less and less. And I've, you'll see, for my open source projects, I protect master, I protect develop, and uh, I always go via pull request. I try and get a friend or someone in the open source community to have a quick look over it, which I've done nothing stupid. Yeah, definitely good if you can uh, lean on people to help you out. Uh, but yeah, to protect it effectively, we it go to come our. Through yet. Are you sure you're sharing the screen? No, you're not. That's what you'll see. You, if you want that to come over, you need to... Um, right, okay, now we're showing the screen. How many 15 years each is 30 years and we can't even do a stream? No, I think the problem is we don't normally stream. We code, so we know what our coding's like. And yeah, it's probably my fault. I don't stream as much as Eddie. It is Andrew's fault, I'm just saying. It's my fault, yes. But we'll get better, we'll get better. Thanks for your patience and support. Do I need to do that a third time now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Last no, time we, we just lost like two people. Oh. They did it, they're thinking, what's going on? These guys are talking, no one's showing anything. You owe me two people. Okay, we'll get them back, we'll get them back. Right, all I've done, I've gone into GitHub, under the issues section, new issue, and I've created this new issue at the top here that says initialize the project using Angular 8. Eddie will share a link to the repository for anyone that wants to have a look. And uh, yeah, this project, this issue has given me a new number called issue 
34. That will become relevant in a moment because right now I'm on the master branch and that's not good. We shouldn't be committed to the master branch, which you've all heard a minute ago. So how do we fix that? Uh, we go into the settings on GitHub and GitHub has a branches section in the settings. Underneath that we have various branch protection rules. There's nothing set up. So we add a rule. And to add a rule for protecting a branch, we simply give it the name of the branch. You can use regular expressions if, uh, if you wanted to. So if you had a particular name like issue hyphen something and you wanted to protect that, you could do. I always keep um, it simple for But now. right now, yeah, all I want to do is protect the master branch. I'm going to say master. Um, I'm going to require a pull request review. So hopefully somebody will be able to requ review my uh, PR. Put loads of comments in his PRs, but I'll sh we'll show you how to do that in a minute. Don't worry. Right now we have no CI hooked up, so there's no point me checking the next one right now, but very soon we will have a CI check set up. Uh, but these are various status checks, so the in GitHub integrates with a number of different things that can check a number of things. It's not necessarily always tested, it, but it's just third-party plugins, let's say, that you might have set up that integrate with GitHub. Um, I'm going to require that commits are signed, because signed commits are good. Uh, and I could go into a long conversation on why that's important because I could effectively commit and pretend I was Eddie if I wanted to. Um, Andrew's right. Most people don't sign their commits, and on GitHub it does highlight the commits that are signed. And if the way to think of it is, you know when you get verified on Instagram or Twitter, you've got that verified badge. They've like verified you are who you say you are. Signing your commits is the same because if someone can commit on your behalf, that's really, really bad. So uh, definitely sign your commits. All you need to do is create a, G, uh, a bit like your SSH keys, but you create um, GPG. a GPG key and you give uh, GitHub half and you have half and so it knows that the commit came from you. And you can get it to save your password so you have to every time you do a commit, even if it's you know, the commit's local, you don't have to enter a password each time, but at least you know it came from that computer. But on the fun side, if you wanted some big name people to look like they're committing to your project, you could easily cheat. And the reason being that Git is a distributed platform at the end of the day underneath the hood all it's got is an email address and that's what github uses to tie things together so grab an email address for a valid github user and you could potentially go wild committing things as them but you would not be able to get the verified flag against there so for anyone that would be accepting your work they should be deeming the verified tag to be important um, so yeah i always say require signed commits so that people have to have verified who they are you will People contributing, you will find that a bit challenging, but we can walk you through that and show you how to do that. It is quite simple. It just seems one of those things that just seems to scare people. Uh, GitHub does have a full guide for that as well. I mean, you go to your settings. Yeah, at the GitHub's top, guides are pretty awesome. And you go to um, settings, I believe it's in. Well, don't go into it now. Uh, but under settings, just very quickly, that you'll find a SSH GPG keys, and there is a full guide there on how to do that yeah. at the bottom. Well, we'll come to that. We don't want to get distracted because I'm usually the one who's really bad at getting distracted. There's Just lots of things to discuss. But anyway, so I've, set, I've added these. I will create that rule now. I need to add that. While you're typing in your password, I'm just going to answer Novaz's question. Uh, yes, it will be auto-deploying to a live server. So I, we actually want to show how you can even, from develop branch, you can deploy to a development environment. And from the master branch, you can deploy to a production environment. So as things merge from a feature branch on GitHub, from a pull request, uh, into develop, it deploys to develop. And as it merges, as you connect a few stories up or a few features, and as they merge into master, they'll get deployed to production. So we will be showing that as well. Required sign commits, we need to check it out. Uh, yeah, do check it out. To, to clone the project, you won't, you won't need to do sign commits. Only if you want to do a commit and push to uh, and contribute well, back to us. accept the PR and merge it as you. Um, the alternative is if we decide that what you've got there is good, but you haven't signed it and you're not willing to, because you can rebase and redo your commit, push it back up, fix that, fix those problems. But if someone's not willing to do that and we want the work, then we would end up having to basically duplicate it ourselves and push it up as ourselves, which is less than ideal. Um, so if you want to get the credit for it, do it the right way, I guess is the, uh, the point there. Okay, so now yeah. we've got that, we can uh, actually go and create a branch. So I'm on the master branch right now. If I was to do a commit, I won't demonstrate it now, GitHub will now reject me pushing to master. So, so instead, I'm going to check out a new branch. And so I you could commit to master locally, but when you push, uh, GitHub will reject it and say this branch is protected. So we protect our mainline branches so no one can push directly to it. It has to come via a pull request. Even for the uh, project owners or authors um, or maintainers, however you want to call them, um, they need to go via a pull request. Everything.
everything, no exceptions, none. So, Andrew, you spot your name wrong. So, so git commit formats, there's, 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 you can write a git commit however you want. However, we often f use the, um, the name conventional change log style. Um, you can put it at the beginning or the end. I don't think it's actually important. Oh, okay. um, yeah, depending on where you look, there's different places you put it at the start or the end. But the okay. main thing is that you've got the number in there. Because what the number does is that hash 34 will create a link within GitHub. So it will automatically link you back to that issue number so you can see the issue number that came in. Um, but the important part really is the first bit here. So uh, I'm calling this a chore. Um, it's not really new code. It's, it's just setting up the project. So we're just going to add Angular 8. Um, normally we'd use things like feet or defects and so forth. And so chore set up, create new project, and then the issue number, which was issue 34. Just to jump in there, I'm laughing and smiling, if you notice on camera, because uh, Novaz in, in, the, in the chat, but I've noticed from GitHub, his name is Ben, has just put a comment on one of our issues that I created a while ago about just ideas for code mortals, which was create t-shirts and hoodies. And uh, he, wrote the co he wrote the comment, give me that merch of a dancing lady and signed it his name. So thank you very much. That's awesome. We are working on that. We, um, uh, we have a mascot that's been done and it should be on the GitHub profile picture and we're working on the logo at the moment with the designers and then uh, we will um, get some merch out soon, maybe run some competitions. Yeah, in fact, we need to put a link out to the logo competition that's currently going on. Um, yeah, so I pushed that up. GitHub has noticed that I've pushed up a branch so I can now do a pull request. Uh, it will use the commit that I put in there, but what I will also do is add a comment into my description just saying it, it closes issue 34. Um, so that's important because GitHub, when this gets merged, will automatically close the issue, which is quite handy. And it adds a reference to it and so forth. A um, couple of questions. Uh, one is, did you leak your keys? I don't think they did. The keys no, weren't that shown. Was a public part of the key. Yeah, public that part. And also, it wasn't the key itself, it's the ID of it, whatever you call it. I can't yeah, think so of it. You, you have a public and a private part to the, each key. The public part you should share with as many people as you can so that everyone, because if, if I go into the terminal here and I do a git log, you will see it comes up as red because I don't actually have my key on my computer, my public side, uh, sorry, this one here. The, the one that's red here, sorry, actually this is Eddie's. But I don't have Eddie's public key, but he could give me his public key, which is what GitHub was showing a minute ago. So when I showed that screen that had the public key element, I could install that onto my computer and Eddie's key won't come up as red anymore. My key comes up in blue because I have my signed key. That's all good. So it, it, it knows about this. So the public element is what you were seeing when I opened up the settings page. There is a private part that sits behind it that looks a lot like a um, an SSL CSR file. So it looks a lot like an SSL key. Uh, and it's much, much longer, way longer than what you saw. So no, I've not leaked them. Um, but thanks for asking. It's good for us to check because then if we, did, if we had, which I have done in the past before, twice in the same stream, kid you not, uh, then uh, we can go and reset them. So just some other points. Um, the terminal, the camera is blocking part of the, the no, screen. I moved it up a minute ago. I think you've probably got an old message. I, I noticed that myself. Okay, got you. Terminal's higher. If we need to move it any higher, let us know, but it should be higher now, which is good. It says better. Anything at the bottom, the camera will block. Okay, perfect. Uh, and Nova says you want he wants a hoodie, t-shirt, and stickers. So do we. We will have them as soon as we get the finalized the logo and slogans and stuff. Some kind of little competition, give a few of them away free and set up like a merch site or we something will, that, that give them away at cost or whatever. And, but yeah, obviously it comes out of our own pocket, but we will certainly get a few out there. I think I'm we should sure. do some competitions. Yeah, I think we should um, get a few out for free. Maybe when we set up some kind of sign up on our uh, subscribers, subscribers, subscribers list, the first, I don't know, 10, 20 people get some 10, stuff. 10, 20? I was thinking like two, but okay. He's nicer than me. <laughs> Yeah, we need to set something up on there. So yeah, get subscribing to all our stuff, and you never know that might win you something. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll do something, or maybe who contributes the most to the project. And don't forget, I say our stuff. I'm talking Code Mortal stuff, right? So yes, Code, Code, Code Mortals, YouTube, Twitter, all the rest. Get subscribing onto these places, and yeah, we'll have to figure out how we do a competition. But open source contributions. It's not just about code. That's the important part. We'll we'll, we'll figure something out. Uh, Cool. Uh, right, we're at 20 past seven. Let's see. Oh, so Elliot shared a picture in Slack of uh, him watching our, our stream on his big screen. Oh. Hey, thanks for that, Elliot. That's awesome. I want to put that on social later on. That's, 
Oh, and uh, I just seen your previous messages. Uh, Meshfin from W3 Develops will be joining as well from Helsinki. Awesome. That's great. We were chatting to him and I didn't realize uh, your comment before. And then Craig says, I want to visit London. Uh, sounds like an awesome tech community. There is a great tech community in London. I think because London's quite I guess, small, that it's it's quite intense. I think the, the problems we have is there are so many events going on in a single night that you don't know which one to go to. So like tomorrow, I've got like four or five different events I want to go to. And they're events that are quite in a niche rather than, I'm talking, not talking about tech events, you've probably got like 20 or 30 tech events at least going on, but that's including say AI, VR, etc. I'm talking about kind of web dev, JavaScript, probably got um, yeah four or five events going on in a single evening. So there's just so much going on, even tonight. So I'm not talking about ours, but others. But we want to bring the wider community together. So we are looking into running a virtual conference and uh, and workshops and stuff. But I won't distract. We're gonna we're gonna try and get something th still thread through to deploying today, which I think will be awesome. Yeah. So the next thing I'm gonna do is rip out some of the stuff that Angular gives you, some of the boilerplate. Um, not that there's anything wrong with it, but I just don't tend to use it these days. Uh, when I first started using Angular, I was using all this stuff with the Karma and Protractor, but Protractor certainly I found a lot of issues because it was built around AngularJS and AngularJS and Angular are two totally different things. Anyone that's experienced AngularJS and they think that's what Angular is, it's not. I know a lot of people went to React because of that, but Angular, if you do come back to it, you'll realize it is a totally different beast. Um, far better beast, but totally different to what AngularJS was. So yeah, Protractor was built around AngularJS. They have done improvements. Angular, I'm not sure why necessarily they're putting Protractor as the default because I do think things like WebDriver, I.O., and certainly Cypress are far superior for uh, browser testing over Protractor. So I'm going to rip out some stuff. So I'm going to start basically with all the spec files. So I'm literally just going to delete these out of here. Um, delete. Delete the stuff you don't want. I don't understand why people keep files they think, oh, I might need later. Because you've done a previous commit, you know, when we set up the project where Angular creates those files, we, we committed it. The files are all there if we need it. They're in the history. So there's no point keeping files, making the code messy. Same with um, code that's commented out. If it's been committed before and then now you you want to kind of half keep it, don't comment it out. Just delete it. It's there in the history. Yeah, I've done a commit already. The commit was done, as we saw a few minutes ago. So if I did for any reason want to bring it back, so I could give it's you all there. there. Um, no problem. Uh, free stuff, Novaz, definitely. We'll run a competition, we'll let you know. And we've got Carl saying, uh, what's the slack? And Novaz saying, what's the slack? So let me get you those details. I actually, I need to uh, send an invite. We haven't got an open slack at the moment. We need to work on that. There are so many things we need to do. Uh, our day jobs get in the way, so we're working on it. So you'll need to send me your emails. Do you um, send me a, your, your email on, on Instagram or Twitter or something and... Uh, I can uh, I can add you, and we have different channels for the live stream. We have a channel for um, the virtual conference, channel for the, the workshop, where we can bounce ideas if you want to talk. Because even if you're remote, even if you're in the States, or I think Helsinki it was, wherever you are, we want people to uh, not just join the live stream, uh, the, the sorry, the workshop or the or the virtual conference that we want to do. We'd love for you to speak. We'll we'll put a big TV behind us. We'll do kind of a newsroom style is what we're thinking. Um, we'll have the, a big TV behind us and then we'll have a few seconds of us kind of transitioning over to the, the person who's going to present and uh, then we'll, we'll actually switch so that the live stream is, in, is, is showing that the other person's actual video rather than from the TV. But these are all ideas at the moment. So uh, yeah, just ping me, ping me an email address and I'll invite you to Slack. Right, so how's the file deleting going? Uh, let's have a look. I've, uh, I've gone through, I think I've removed them all. Obviously, for those that I wasn't actually talking while I was doing it, you'll have to watch the stream and see uh, what it was I removed. Um, but it was basically most of the spec files and within the config, anywhere that test and end-to-end -end was referenced. So all I have right now is a source folder, the various default files. I've noticed that Angular have actually changed something slightly in Angular 8. They've centralized some of their TS config because there's normally a, an, a test and an app JSON for the TS config. That, that's TypeScript script's way of knowing what to do. Um, so I'm going to leave those ones in. Normally I don't have to rename that within the Angular JSON, but I'll leave that alone. Uh, there is a slight error there. Let's close in bracket, and JSON doesn't support that. Right, so I'm going to just hop over to Terminal, stop the project, clear my backlog, and just start it again. And with any luck, if it's all correct, Angular won't kick up any issues. 
while that's going, I just want to say, if you're watching, don't forget to give us a thumbs up um, and uh, subscribe to the channel, to this channel, as well as our Code Mortals channel. I will, because we're doing future streams that we do together, so I'm still going to keep my channel. My channel is going to focus more on, on open source and events and hackathons, but uh, these sorts of live streams um, and other videos like that, and Andrew and me do together, we will be doing on the Code Mortals um, uh, YouTube channel. So I will show you the link. Don't forget to subscribe to that. I will get the link now. So for the first time ever, the compile actually worked first time and the web page still loads when I refresh it. So it looks like I removed the correct files. I can't spot any others that I have missed. So I am pretty happy with that. However, I'm still awaiting the pull request from the previous one to be merged. And I probably oh, have an sorry. issue raised for my new one because Eddie likes talking. And we do I've got distracted. Talk, so I'm going to have to raise a couple more issues. But if you could look at that pull request for me and you can talk about the pull request quickly whilst I raise an issue around clearing out the default Angular tests. So I'm just going to say remove. I was just going to say don't create too many issues. We would like the audience to also create the issues too. Yeah, well, if you talk to me about the sort of issues, I can raise some. Yes, that's true. Okay, I'm just going to share the, the YouTube channel for Code Mortals so people can subscribe to that in the future because from next, well, for our next live stream, we'll be on the Code Mortals channel as well. Okay, so now that I've, I've shared that, um, what are we doing? So, well, what I will quickly say is on the plus side is uh, whilst Eddie hasn't actually approved my PR or no one else has yet, prob oh, look, maybe someone has now, no one's yet approved the PR on the Code Mortals on project. It then um, what I can do is I can actually still branch off that branch. And when it, when the previous one is merged, it will GitHub will figure it all out. So it doesn't stop me from pushing code up and raising a new pull request, but I now need to note there's an order the pull request should be merged in. That's the only thing. That's fine. I'm about to approve it now. So um, let me merge it. Let's just do it. So I'm, I'm not... Have you reviewed? Go on to the it's thirty page. file changes, <laughs> but the thing is, I can't unfortunately show you my screen. We need a we need a, um, a, a streaming computer that we can both send our I screens to. I can hop off the seat for a second. You can talk about pull requests for a minute because I've been driving. Let's do it. Okay, I, I've got a trap nerve in my back, so you can, I might squeal when I move, and uh, just that will hopefully be fixed by next week. Um, okay, so uh, hopefully you can see me on Andrew's computer. And Andrew has just left us, which is fine. So I have uh, approved the pull request, and let me show you how I, I did that. Um, I am logged, as an an logged in as Andrew on his computer, so I wouldn't be able to approve it because you can't approve your own. But went to the pull request tab, and then uh, go to the pull request that Andrew raised, and then I went to file changes and looked through, and on the top right, um, I went to approve. It's grayed out here because you can't approve your own pull request. Um, and I approved it, but now I, I approved it from my computer, logged in as me, and it does say down here, let me just keep the chat so I can see if anyone's writing to me on the computer. Um, this is just a suggestion, just one upload. Uh, not sure what that means. Uh, sorry, uh, Novaz, I might have missed a chat before. Oh, here we go. Um, Novaz says, uh, oh, I've missed lots of chat, sorry all. Um, what's the conceptual takeaway that we should remove specs? Because we're not going to use them. That's the only reason why we, we're removing them. We aren't going to do any spec testing. We're going to do full end-to-end -end testing in the browser. So uh, that's the reason why we, we remove them. They're not bad. It's just not something we're going to do for this application. There's no complicated business logic where you want to test, say, um, there will be boundary conditions we want to test, but there won't be any business logic within, I guess, classes that we want to spec out. Uh, Thanks for the uh, DM on Instagram. Awesome. Do you guys have a plan to live stream with React in the future? Not really. We're, we're Angular people. Uh, React for, for small projects, fine. But because a lot of our, our projects are quite large, Angular, it, we feel, is, a, is better for that. It's more, more laid out. It's, got, it's, a, it's a framework, whereas React's a library. So uh, we, and we want people to realize that Angular is just as easy as React. So we, we probably focus more, more on that. Um, and uh, uh, this is a suggestion, just one upload. Not sure what that means, Novaz, if you could uh, elaborate. Uh, Elliot says, noob question. There are no noob questions. After 15 years, I'm still asking those noob questions. Uh, what is the main thing to think about when creating issues? Are we creating to-dos or what? Great question. So um, 
we usually get as, as people contribute more to issues we'll make it more strict but for now we can keep it quite quite simple as in we can create templates on github so when you do raise an issue it asks you is it a bug is it a feature is it an epic is it an idea and you can create all these templates so when you choose one it will kind of create a template for you and you can fill in the details but for now don't worry take it easy we can always edit it and improve it and, and so forth so we're pretty easy going so do do raise an issue with any ideas. Um, if you do want to raise an issue to get your daily open source contribution in the green square, then ones we need raised for, the ones on the whiteboard, which I know, you, I'm sorry, you can't see very well, uh, it will be the Angular top one and TypeScript is kind of done, but we'll need one for Cypress, so to add Cypress to the project. So just a ticket, just, just for the title, you could write Cypress. Um, and then in the body, if you put a link to the Cypress website, therefore anyone else comes across to it, they can find the documentation. Uh, anyone else um, who wants to raise an issue, we need one for uh, integrate with CI, will be another issue. Also another one would be... Um, Publish the actual deployment. Yeah, the deployment as well. So deploy uh, CD, so the deployment side um, after CI. Probably want to remove the some of the Angular HTML that it produced and just put something of our own site up there that's true yeah we probably want to customize we will get into how to build a website from that but for now we probably just want to um at least change a bit of the site actually we're showing on the screen now it says welcome to code mortals with the angular logo we could put our mascot in there instead because we've got that and change some of the links at the, at the bottom put links to maybe our social so we'll do some of that as well so if i go back to the pull request it's got one approval that you can see at the bottom and um, Andrew's scroll is backwards, so I've got to scroll down to scroll up. Um, and then uh, I will hit merge as Andrew, which Andrew can merge his pull request because I approved it on my computer. Um, choose which email address, yeah, so uh, confirm. So now that's merged, so Andrew can now branch off the default branch. No. How many how many commits did you do? Well, we basically merge. Well, if you do a normal merge, it adds another commit to the history. Yeah, it gives you more credit. Get more green squares. Keep things tidy. Let's keep things simple for now. We'll, we'll go into squashing and so forth. So um, should we swap places, new driver game? I was going to create an issue, wasn't I? Um, no, I'll let, I'll let the audience create an issue. Let's swap places. But I'm going to hop across with my dodgy back. Oh, oh, you've moved the chair further away. You're trying to make it more exciting for me. More challenging. More challenging. OK. So we've got some more things in the chat. So Tanya writes, issues uh, can be bugs, to-dos, etc. Um, labels help identify uh, what the issue is. So yeah, Tanya's absolutely right. Um, issues are literally everything, and labels uh, do help um, identify what it is, and then you can filter via labels if you want to see what all the defects are, or bugs are, or epics, or ideas, or questions. So uh, we need to sort out our issues. I do need to do that. That's so our label, sorry. So we do have some default labels, but we want to add more. Uh, Novaz, so Restream is a service where you can stream uh, to that and they stream out your video to your account. So you could stream YouTube and Twitch at the same time and it'd just be one upstream. Um, yeah, I've heard, uh, Novaz, that's a great idea. I have heard of that and I've heard some negative as well as in you split your audience. So yeah, I think it's probably good at the beginning to try and cast your net wide, but then we want, we want to focus, we're focusing on YouTube. Um, but there's something we should look into. You're, you're absolutely right. Thank you for raising that. That's a really good idea. Uh, Elliot says he's raised 37 for deployment. Awesome. Thank you, Elliot. That's great. We should start adding people as well to the, the organization um, so we can build up the community, not just on Slack, but also, also on GitHub. What, what are you up to? Are you tapping right. away? So I've just pushed up the removal part for removing the tests, and I'm going to raise another pull request now. So I hope you're on top another of pull request. Ready to accept or review this, right? Elliot, I found a uh, vulnerability. So GitHub reckons there's a problem somewhere, even though we've only just created this. Somewhere deep down, we can have a look and see what's going on. I was so just let's not worry about that right now. I was just going to say, Elliot, are you in front of a computer? You've raised an issue. Should we add you to the organization and uh, you can approve the PR? What do you think? Get community involved a bit more? As a collaborator, right? Uh, yeah, let's just uh, have a look and see. What do you think, Elliot? Good idea? He's winning 100, but I think that was from a previous com I comment. That, <laughs> that was there already. No, I think that was there already, well, maybe. as in before I asked well, the question. There's a few seconds lag, so yeah, yeah. chances are. Yes, because you're only just on the issue bit now. 
How are we doing on time? It's 7.30. Okay, we need to race ahead. Let's go. Okay, so next up, let's add Cyprus, I guess? Or should we let's change do it. the checks page? Okay, let's right. add Cyprus. Let's add Cyprus. So therefore, we can change. It can get the check for the for the for maybe the... Uh, we the CI in this. Because we can get the CI to do the build and deployment and then add Cyprus as a check dot step. I normally what do, do you think? Do the deployment first, but... We both got to do, we got to do both. Let's do, do the deployment. The People are probably more interested to see the CI getting up and running. Because then we can enhance the CI with the additional checks from Cyprus. True. Okay, okay let's, do, let's that. do that. Where are we hosting it to, though? So, okay, CI, oh, t- uh, Travis right. or Circle. A- Andrew wants Circle. I- I'm, no, I- Rock, paper, scissors. I'm making make my piece. We use Circle okay. if we use Firebase for hosting. How fancy is that? I mean, come on, I'm giving you one. You ought to give me one. What do you all reckon? I'll put the microphone. I think Sh- you should just let me win every time. That's, uh, that's normally what I go for well, all day. So We could say we could fight for it, but my bad back is not well, I was going to rock, paper, scissors, but... I think the audience should decide. Shout out the camera and let us know. That's not going to work. That's a really stupid idea. Okay. Um, rock, paper, scissors. Yes, I'm here. Yes, what do you need from me? Um, we're going to get you to approve the PRs. But okay, before we get there... Are we going to rock, paper, scissors for circle versus Travis, or are we going to just go with uh, I think we just go for circle. Okay. And then we're we go with five. We're going to rock, paper, scissors on that. No, we can't, <laughs> you can't have double standards. Uh, okay. <laughs> I, 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 I let you win my pawn so I can take your queen. Yeah, the problem is I've got to then set up a GCP account and stuff. No, no, I've got all that. I'll do all that. Wait, but on Code Morse, have you got it all set up? I'll just do it under mine. Because then you have to put a credit card in the stuff, no? don't know. I just want to keep it simple. But so was I. Um, have a think. Because, yeah, okay. we need someone to deploy to it. It should really be a Code Morse account. Though. It should be. Of your credit card. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, okay Elliot, I'm going to... Fine, I'll, as you. I'll, stay, I'll get started on the CI. So, first thing that we're going to need if we're using Circle is a Circle YAML file. Okay. Now, how much can I remember? Off the top of my head, probably not very much. For check, check the docs. Check the score. So, you want to go docs wise, okay rather than me cheating and going for previous projects. Yeah, go to the docs, so, so people know where to look and so yeah, forth. Fair enough. So yeah, so Circle, uh, I can go to the app, and there's loads of projects on the app, uh, and hopefully it does know that I have access to Code Morses somewhere around here. No, it doesn't. Why doesn't it? Uh, you might have to refresh. Uh, I see, Travis would be fine. He's, he's a Circle. Be marked as an owner. I think that might be you, Eddie. If you're you set up the GitHub project, right? Do I? Yeah, let me have a look. I will fix it. No, I am down in money. No, see, I'm I'm uh, guess not why am I not that public? Yeah. Um so I'm 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 inclusive, I include everyone as owner. Yeah, okay. So it's not that. Elliot, I've just added you to your organization, you should get an invite. And uh if you accept the invite, then you can go to the pull requests and approve Andrew's pull request. Just, you know, it's not always just me. Get people mixing it, and we can put some comments. Anyone can comment, though. You don't have to be part of the organization. You go to the docs anyway. Well, can you have a look into Circle and see if you can follow the project in Circle? Then? Okay, cool. Um, post CI email about code quality. Cool. 39. Thanks for raising that. Got 14 people now watching. Give us some thumbs up. Um, that will really help. And don't forget to subscribe to both channels, mine, as which we're streaming on now, as well as Code Mortals, where we'll be streaming in the future. If you scroll up, it's just further up the chat. Okay, so uh, Circle. Circle has lots of documentation. I'm going to just go to their sample config file, and I so. guess I will grab the, uh, the top one for the moment. We don't need anything too complicated for the minute. Let's keep it simple, yeah. that in. Uh, I don't need the test step quite yet. I'm going to take that out. Now, Circle has all sorts of images we can use. We effectively want one for Node, uh, so I believe I can just say Node. Current LTS is 10, so I'm just going to say Node version 10. Uh, then in steps that we can configure, first step will be to check it out. The next step will probably be something on the lines of an NPM install. Uh, we then probably are going to want to do an npm build. So if I just go to the um, code, we can see in the package JSON here, the build will just run an ng build command. That's fine. We don't need anything clever right now. 
So we'll do that. So run npm run build. So note that I have to put the word run in there for build. There are only two special npm commands, which are start and test. Anything else requires the word run in there for those that aren't familiar with npm, which I'm sure most people are. I have now fixed Circle, I think. Um, I needed to give permission to the uh, organization Code Mortals because now on GitHub, when you add uh, an app, it's by default, it doesn't give access to all your organizations. You have to actually manually approve it. Awesome. So let's just start with that, shall we? Just a simple build, with no deployment going on. Just check the code build. Sounds good. And uh, yeah, with any luck, it will come back with an OK on that. So again, have we got a an issue for this. We can probably put it under deployment, right? But there was a deployment issue raised, I believe. But this is, yeah, this is not the deployment one, though. This is <laughs> running the build. It is just running the build, then, right? It is just running the build, yeah. Uh, how's that pull request look? It's still review required on the previous one. Okay. Um, uh, post CI email back. Post CI email. Okay, interesting. So, if I create one, set up CI. Do it. Do it, yeah. I should have mentioned that for someone else. Um, set up Cyprus. Someone else wants to raise that. Ow, looking around, killed my back. Um, setting up Cyprus. I think we've got one for deployment. We didn't have one for CI, which Andrew's, Andrew's just created. And if we can have one, if someone can raise an issue for um, customizing the, the homepage, the, the default Angular page. You don't have to put all the details in. I know we'll do some fancy website. But for now, just let's just put some of the social links on there or something. Just raise an issue. You can't get it wrong. Raise it, you get your open source GitHub contribution for today. Okay, so this was issue 40. And Oh, did you put uh, two-factor authentication on the organization on GitHub? Elliot's setting it up now. We, 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 we're quite... Uh, we yeah, I think we do, because you're setting it up. Yeah, we're quite strict on our organization. Sorry, but you'll thank us later. Trust me, your clients will be happy in the future. It's, um, it's better yeah, practice. We do have it turned on, yes. So, yeah, another one for anyone that does run an organization. A lot of people don't require it, but belts and braces is always good, especially if the code repository is central to what you're doing. Turn two factor authentication on. It's for your own good as well. Look after your identity on the internet. Okay. So I should. Did I get too far as pushing it? Yeah, I should have pushed another branch up. So again, I can go. And I've now lost GitHub because I had it open in here. Where are we? You busted it. Oh, well. Moving around too many windows too quickly. Right. Okay. Pull requests. That one's still review required. I have got a notification saying it's noticed my other one though. So I will raise a, well, I won't raise a PR yet actually. What we need to do now is back to circle. Oh, it's gonna show me, show me a pull request. Yes. Right, so I can see Code Mortals on here now. At the moment, Code Mortals is not following any GitHub projects. So under settings and projects, I can see the Code Mortals GitHub IO one. And I should be able to go into the config for it and tell it to follow um, the project. Yeah. So I hit follow. And now if I go back to the jobs list, I can see there is a queued build on master. Um, however, it won't build master because master's got nothing in it. And I don't think it has. It's not going to pick up the branch, is it? Because it doesn't pick up branches by default until it's got the. Uh, until it's following it. So I'm going to have to give it a nudge with something. Uh, what can we nudge it with? That's why you should start with CI first, probably, even before even before you um, put Angular in, actually. Maybe we've learned something tonight as well. What about starting with an empty project that's just got circles config? Yeah, mate. I mean, start with just the CI is fine. Um, yeah. I mean, we're trying to start as early in the project as possible. I was adding a couple of line breaks. I normally put a couple of line breaks in here anyway. Uh, what we're going to do is squash this down when we merge it. So whatever commits I put in are going to largely disappear. Uh, git IO, git PR. Uh, added. Spicy. Uh, that should give the CI a nudge, hopefully. 
got like nine people watching and tw- 12 or 14 a minute ago. We're doing, we're doing pretty good for our, our first Code Mortal stream, not on Code Mortal's channel. If that makes any sense. Okay, so the first one should have failed. That's good. There we go. Right, it's picked up issue 40 because I just pushed a very small change up. With any luck, there's no build error. All right, good. Uh, so we can watch the, the CI and it will just show us what happened. So checks out the code. It's running an NPM install. Probably take it about 15 seconds or so to do that. It's normally quite quick. If you have any questions, don't forget to write it in the chat. So we're showing you the CI part. So it's going to build the code. But any questions, write it in the chat and we'll explain more. But CI is going to keep it really quite basic at the moment. We're just doing the build, which yes, you can do locally. But uh, and it has passed. But we want to uh, do so many more. We run automated tests. We want to do deployment. So that will be coming soon. Hopefully we can get a bit of that done tonight. Yep, so that's created everything. So that's all we wanted. Um, what I can now do is I can go over to GitHub and I can actually update our branch rule for master. Um, let's edit that. And with any luck, it should show me that there's some CI builds going on. Here we go. So one of them is a build error. We're not interested in that one. Um, what we are interested in is the CI build one. So we're saying, yep, we want that to have passed. Uh, I'm not going to say up to date because up to date not too important unless there's a lot of people involved and now if I save that what we should be able to also see is when I raise this pull request which I'm going to do now uh, what I'll do is I will call it the name of the first commit oh okay it's still it's not up to date so this branch at the moment is not up to date with the main branch um, and in essence this is this one right CI build Okay, and this will close issue 40. So this is why the order of PRs is going to become important because I've, I'm raising this PR, but it still knows about the previous change I made because I'm just branching off the same branch. Um, but I can still raise it. It doesn't cause a problem. GitHub at the moment notices that I've got other changes in here that aren't in master. If this was to get merged first, it would already bring those over and it would effectively mark the other PR as not having anything in there. So that's uh, why if you branch off a branch, you need to merge in order. Otherwise, um, it make it, it voids the previous branches and PRs. So just bear that in mind. What have you done? What have I've you done? I've jumped the gun slightly. So even though this hasn't been approved yet, which we did still need an approval on. I, I can do that now. Um, this, I won't be able to merge it because I've just added a branch protection rule, but this hasn't got any tests in it. So I'm going to have to just turn that back off again for a second. See, so even down. after 30 years combined, we still make mistakes. But as long as you know how to kind of fix it, know about the, the risks, knock-on effects, it's just all experience. I'll tell you that Eddie's just behind because he's too busy talking. He's thinking, I've said about three times now, we need this PR. I was, <laughs> waiting, I was waiting for Elliot. Okay, I'll do it now. Elliot, you can do the next one. We've already got uh, two, uh, another one kind of in the pipeline. Quick fire. We're, we're, we're here. We're Little and often, right? Little and often. I, I'm the bottleneck at the yeah, moment. As fast as I can. So which one do you want me to uh, approve? 38? So 38 needs an approval. The right chore. Here, so okay. If you take a look at the code, obviously you can basically see what we've removed, which is all the test stuff. Um, the, again, test lint checks that will go on. There's the E2E test. We just cleared out all the tests for the moment. We're going to put some back in. Um, and yeah, obviously, all the files that were associated are listed out there as well. Approved and merged. Cool. So if I go back to the PRs now, I should see just the one PR, and there's no longer as many. Oh, we're still picking them up. GitHub's been a bit slow about it. Um, but it should know that, uh, that that has now got part of the code in there. Quarter to three in the morning. Carl, wow. And you're a machine. That's like way... P- I'll be getting up at that time. That's like really late. Uh, I'm just turning back the branch protection rule again. So the other PR, how's that looking? Are we happy with this one? Are you going to give me an uh, approval on it? Oh, let's have a look. Elliot, if, if you're uh, still doing um, 2FA, I can do the review this one and uh, you can do the one afterwards. There will be more. So you've got 11 file changes set up at the build project. I know you can't see my screen, but you saw Andrew make these changes. Looks okay. Um, I think you need to update it. Actually, it's got. Uh, yeah, I can do that. It has the so changes from the previous one. It's still noticing the previous ones because we just need to do a rebase against it, really. So I can check out master locally. I can do a git pull on that. Put that password in, and then if I go back to the branch, which 
the issue for this anyway. And then I do a git rebase with master. Shouldn't have any problems with it. It's done it straight away. And I can just do a git push. And we have to pause that up because we've rebased it. Yes, rebase is really powerful, but never use rebase when you're working with someone else on the branch. On your default branches, your mainline branches, don't rebase. Um, but if it's your branch just for your feature and you want to rewrite history and rebase and do all sort of funky stuff, go ahead. But do not do it if anyone else has that branch unless they're happy to have the history changed. It's not a huge issue on branches anyway, because at the end of the day, you can just delete the branch locally and then recreate it. But if you did have active work because you haven't been pushing frequently, then yeah, that can become a bigger issue. But yeah, try and only do it with branches that it's just you working on or you're at least in communication with the other person so they accept that you're going to be doing that because it can be destructive. I have witnessed plenty of projects where people just default to force pushing changes, which is another reason to protect your main branch because then it prevents anyone from force pushing to your main branch. And you certainly don't want to lose any of the really important stuff because generally a branch shouldn't have that much in it anyway. Although we know from experience that you do get the occasional large PR. <laughs> and I, I have never made a PR larger than, I don't know, 50,000 lines. 50,000 lines. You heard it from the horse's mouth. That's the expression, right? Yeah. 50,000 lines. That's crazy. That's additions. That's Imagine deletions. He works too hard. He should talk more. Work less. So, okay, I want to approve it. Um, uh, Elliot says he's having some issues with his two-factor authentication. So let me approve that. Um, you said you've updated it. Did a force push. Um, one file change. Which one file change. The new CI file. Let's do it. So now, if we approve this, we're going to have CI. So see how simple it is to get CI working on your on your project. Yeah, so um, you do a very basic check for it. It's making sure the project builds. But Angular internally, we know is doing a load of checks on the code. So we know TypeScript is compiling and will effectively have a web page at the end of it that would load. There may be an error on the page because we're not testing it yet, but uh, at least we know it does build and passes, let's say, check one, which is the most basic check that any project should really do this because they say it's dead easy. Well, why not just put it in there? It's, it's a very simple, quick check that saves another developer that's going to pick it up from being able to run it locally. And we are going to add some more exciting checks shortly, and you'll see the browser driving up and the mouse moving, clicking without us driving it. We will show you that. I don't know if we're going to get time today. It might not be today, stream. It might be next week. So when we're on Code More, who's next week? We might add the uh, testing side. Then let's try and get the deployment now, and maybe just change the yeah. opening page and not say Angular and say something else. But uh, yeah, good. we'll just get that deployment going, right? So what uh, what are we going to deploy to? What have we decided? Excuse me. I already decided Firebase. I don't know what you decided. Okay, well, we are a G Suite user at the end of the day. So, in theory, we should be able to do that. Um, yeah, okay. Let's just, let's just do it. We, we want some real-time comms with people, you know, in terms of the on the platform. So, I think, um, I think it would uh, be useful to put it there. Yes, we could move it later on from GitHub Pages to Firebase, but uh, let's... Um, Let's do it. Yeah, I'm just wondering what's going to happen in here. Right, in terms of service. So we've never actually been onto here. So this is the first time this account has been near here. But it's really good. People can see how to set up. So we've done yeah, CI. Until they get to my card details, in which case I might have to swap the feed over. I can talk. I, I can be a, uh, a filler. We don't want any of that. Yeah, we'll agree to them. I've done this before. There's nothing too worrying in there. Uh, so Elliot, um, no worries. We can ha have a look later on, or we can have a look offline, um, and we can chat on Slack and, and try and sort out your two FA. Uh, Novaz, can you use Circle CI to push to a live FTP server if the build completes? Yep, you can get it to push to FTP, to GitHub Pages, to Firebase, to AWS. There's so many things. It can go to anywhere you want. Um, Circle and Travis usually have a lot of. Um, deployment kind of uh, config where you can just optionally choose where it goes but then you can do a custom one if you if you really need to do something really custom um, and we're not huge fans of FTP because FTP is quite insecure so um, uh, usually we use um, like the AWS CLI or Firebase CLI or uh, or just Git itself because Git runs over SSH so therefore we could push to GitHub pages um, on success you have to remind me, when we um, go into GCP, we need an organization created, right? I do Firebase. Don't do GCP. Keep it simple. 
I saw that face. I saw that face. Don't 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 judge Firebase. What do you think of Firebase? Tell us. I have no problems with that, but uh, I think you've got the same problem you know, as such as far as saying that was very like cold hearted. Firebase was just dead simple. I don't know why I didn't use it sooner. AWS and GCP and Azure are really powerful, but um, Firebase is just so simple. It just works. It, it's pretty awesome. Uh, and this is free, right? Yeah, everything we're doing is free. Um, yeah, there's a really generous free uh, tier on CircleCI or on Travis. And GCP, and what we're using, the hosting, I believe, there is a free tier, and unless you get really big traffic going. Well, I've, I've got five uh, sites I use for development testing and, and so forth on Firebase, and I haven't been charged a penny. And uh, we're hitting it quite a lot with quite a few people. So, um, well, quite a few, like five, ten people. But... Um, with functions running in the background and on, on, on crons and stuff. So yeah, they're, they're really, really, really generous, um, uh, really generous uh, tier. Oh, okay, Andrew, you might have a friend. So um, Deploy HQ, um, Novaz, when you say you've been using Deploy HQ, is that to actually do the deployment? So you go, what, from CI to Deploy HQ to your deployment, uh, to your kind of hosting platform. Uh, Venkatesh, it's cool, has lots of features. And Nova says Firebase is equal to terrible. Oh, wow. Why do you think? I know there are limitations, and I see your face. Oh, it wasn't my choice, Firebase. Um, and uh, then Venkatesh comes back with AWS has lots of hidden costs. It does. Firebase, I think, is f for n nine times out of ten, for most people, it's enough. If you want, it does a, takes a, does a lot of heavy lifting for you. So if you want, for example, SSL on a custom domain, you can get it, but it's a shared SSL. Whereas if you want your own cert, and just having some trouble, you spot your name wrong. Well, no, it's, oh, I'm just gonna give it a sign. I said the same thing the first time round, it said, you can't do this, and this time round, it's uh, letting me do yeah. it. So I was gonna wonder, is there a billing thing I need to do? What, what okay, cool. Um, and then uh, if you want the custom certificate, SSL certificate on your domain, then uh, yes, you'll need to go to GCP and, and do some more manual setup. You can't use Firebase for that. So there are limitations, but for most people, they're not going to want to create their own certificate and use. What's that thing where you can create a free certificate? Um, uh, you've got Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt, that's mm -hmm. the one. But most people aren't going to want to do that, really. Venkatesh supports Firebase. Thank you. I'm new to Firebase, uh, but I think it's pretty cool. For most projects, it's, it's pretty good. And you can always move over to AWS or, or GCP if you need to. Okay, so we're going to be using the hosting part. And sorry, I, while Teddy was talking, I have clicked a little bit. Under develop, there's a hosting section. If we click get started in the hosting section, it will tell us we need to install the Firebase tools. It asks you to do it globally, but because we want the CI to also be able to do this, I'm actually going to install it within the project as a dev dependency and then you can do what mpx to then run we it can, yeah run the tools to do the deployment yeah so uh, i will do an npm i save dev for firebase was it tools or cli tools okay so that's the first step now it's been a little while since i've done this i'm trying to remember the, the other steps we have to do we have to go through a few things so we continue um, I can get them out we need to get some to keys, don't we? So we have to sign in. We have to get a CI key. Yeah. Um, uh, yes. You do. And I can't remember the command either. Yeah, I'm just thinking it'll, <laughs> come up on the, it'll come up on the screen when I do it. That's the only thing I was thinking. But uh, I can always change it after this session to something different. Okay. Okay. So uh, and I will run MPX. So I've only installed the Firebase tools to this project. But if I use MPX, I can still run the Firebase command straight out of here. Uh, already logged in as someone else. Ooh, can I run, do a log out then? No. Okay, we'll log in. Uh, collecting this information, no thank you. No, you're not supporting the developers. No, not today. Okay, CLI for this one. Yep, done, right. So we're logged in. Now there is another command we have to run in a minute, but we'll find out in a sec. Uh, Firebase in it, right, yep, we'll do that. So this will initialize us for Firebase's hosting, and it will ask us a few questions. I think, well, should we say no to some things now, or do you want to say yes to things now, and we'll add them later, what do you reckon? Like, for example, database. I think we should say no to... Yeah, let's not worry about anything else right now. Keep it really simple. We don't even know if we're going to use Firebase long term. We'll, we'll, we'll see. 
Oh. Okay. Uh, oh, hello. I see there's at least one feature in the space bar. Oh, you didn't, uh, you yeah. didn't select. Let's not enter it. Space bar to pick the right hosting is all we want for now. Okay, so that will go and do some stuff. We will say, what do you want to do for the default project? So, yep, so it's picked up. I've created a project on well, GCP Firebase called Code Morphers Website. So I'm going to use that one, and it picked that up. So you want to use your public directory. I will change that manually in a minute, but so the default will be fine. Configure a single page app. Yes, we do. Um, yep, that's it. So Firebase should now be configured on the project. If I was to go over to Visual Studio, we will see in here a Firebase JSON file. Now, actually, when we do a build, it, I believe we go into a .dist folder, which is why I didn't pick it, so I want to double check. So if we just do an npm run build locally, uh, I think well, we can change the config for this in the Angular JSON. I'll go find it, in fact. Keep it vanilla as much as possible. What, what have uh, I missed that? Sorry, I was looking at my phone. Dist. So the output for folder is dist slash code morsels. I'm actually going to change that. I'm going to drop the code morsels and just make it dist because we're not going to have lots of projects going on. If, you, if I was creating libraries as well and all the rest of it inside there, I might want a longer path, but it's just a single one. It's just the there's only going to be a one app for this. There's not going to be lots of other things for libraries and things. We're not sharing out libraries. I mean, that's the nice thing with Angular. You can build libraries. So I'm just going to change that to the dist folder, in which case I should be able to guess that the value here will be dist. Uh, ignore everything else. Yeah, it's only the index file we're interested in. And that will do for now. Right, so from there... Um, we could just run Firebase Deploy from my computer, but we're not going to do that. We're going to run that from the CI. Okay. So it comes up with a default domain. We will have to connect up some other domains later. Uh, now I've got to think for a moment. What do we have to do? So I need to get a CI key. Um, and I will go and check this on the internet. So Firebase um, login CI. I think actually it's, I think I might know it. I think it's MPX Firebase login colon CI. Do you remember everything? You you got that right as well. How do you remember these things? He's he's like just remembers everything. He even remembers people's names from years ago. From we met a hackathon like once, like seriously. Yeah. So that command MPX Firebase login colon CI. That's a private token. Has generated a token which I should not really be sharing, but we will use it for the minute, and I will go and generate a brand new one in a little while. Okay. Cool. It will be dead shortly. Um, okay. So to do the deployment, we can add this command in. Uh, and what we do actually is I'm going to take this token and I'm going to go over to the CI. I've got lots of windows open. And within settings, so this is where Circle can manage settings for you. Mm -hmm. And I, I like to use, there's two places we can manage environment errors. I like to use context for things because that's a more private area that only owners effectively can manage context. And you can create, in fact, it's upset with me on here. I need to, I need to sort out my permissions. But um, for the moment, what we will do is within this project, we, we can just do manual environment variables just for this project, which will also be used. And I'm going to add one called Firebase key. And I'm going to paste in the value. Um, Circle does obfuscate a chunk of that. So if I ever want to change it, which I will be doing, I have to create a brand new one. But that's now available as a, an environment variable on the CI. So that will pick up when we run the script. I hope you're all following this because you're going to not only contribute to our project, we want you to start your own projects and we want you to use CI and we want you to deploy as well on successful build and run automated tests. And you don't have to use these tools. So if you don't want to use Cypress and you want to use something like Selenium or WebDriver, you also can or Protractor. If you want to use Travis instead of Circle, you also can. If you want to host on GitHub Pages or AWS, you also can. So, um, yeah, uh, I think... Uh, you know, host it wherever you want. This is just showing you the workflow. And it's always best to get that hello world going through the pipeline and deploying out. And so you can see straight away. And therefore, any future changes, you know if it's broken that pipeline. Have you broken something? No, I'm just now thinking because I haven't um, run one of these up for a little while or written one from scratch for a little while, whether that's the correct token. So I might cheat and look at another project if you're all right with that. Yeah, do it. 
that's uh, that's we're running a short on time. It's already eight o'clock in the UK, and it's probably three a.m. in I think the Far East. We've got Carl from the Far East, so um, yeah, it's quite late. And I'm guessing we have people like Elliot on the the West um, to the States. I'm guessing it's probably like and three in the afternoon as a guess. Um, so yes, we're probably going to stream for a maximum of another twenty thirty minutes, but we really want to get. It deployed and then we'll make some changes to the front end just uh, and add some social links or something and we'll show you that on a successful build it automatically deploys out and you can view it we'll get we'll share the link in the chat so you can view the website um, uh, and view the changes and if you want to raise a PR on uh, the project you can and once it gets approved and merged it will automatically deploy out so your changes will be live on the site therefore going forward if anyone wants to contribute it's just a seamless process. And then when we add automated testing, it's going to get really sexy. I'm glad you're excited. I am. I'm really tired. I've been up since 3 a.m., but I am still excited. This stuff floats my boat. Yeah, we'll have to see what happens um, because the previous projects I've done, there's normally multiple environments as such for different things, but um, I believe we're going to just want to deploy to the default. I think it's just going to be called Code Mortals website. So I'm going to add another environment variable for that. And if it doesn't work, we'll have to have a little bit more of a look into that. Uh, but yeah, so generally, we're just saying use that token. And again, we deploy using that token. But all we're doing here is telling it to set up which target environment. And that, we won't have time on this stream to talk about it, but we will talk about what when you've got multiple environments, production, develop, how would you manage multiple environments? Um, I believe that because I haven't set up the multiple environments yet, it will just pick off that name. Uh, capital S cash. Oh, where are we going? Fuse mod. Oh yes, we need to set up some values on the CI. Where's the CI branch? New variable. Which which variable is it setting up now? So this is the target environment one, which I think we'll just call get. I think I hard coded that in my project. Yeah, probably. Because it depends how many environments you're running to, right? Or if you've got different projects you're deploying to, it depends which way you're doing it. Yeah, I was deploying to two, uh, not one project, but two environments. So I yeah. just put minus minus project. Are you actually sorry, okay? And just put it in. Yeah, I didn't see the need for that, but it's the same thing. Yeah, I mean this is where we would run different contexts for things normally, rather than because this environment variable would be shared by every build. Whereas in the context, you can specify only run this context for this right. branch build. So I would normally put the target environment into the context and then say, right, we're deploying to develop or production. Uh, but we need to sort out permissions again. So we can look at that on the next stream and we'll go into some of the more advanced options you can do. Uh, Venkatesh says uh, he's new to Circle, waiting to hear more about it. What do you normally use? Do you use normally use Travis? I mean, I use Circle. We use Circle with our clients. I know use Andrew uses Circle for his uh, own project. Uh, I'm more of a Travis fan. I think it's just a bit a bit simpler and does what I, I need. Um, but it's interesting to know what, what you would compare it with. I have my Jenkins cap with me. No, I don't. I'll have to put my Jenkins cap on. Uh, it's just not another, another CI. And... Uh, Adash, have I pronounced your name right? Hello, thanks for joining. You're coming towards the end of the stream, but uh, yeah, hopefully you'll see things come together and working. We have a few had a few technical challenges, be it with the camera, be it with audio, be it with a few other things. I can't remember what it was. Yep, so I'm just reviewing what files have changed. So package JSON, yeah, I expect that to change. Package lock has changed. We've added a Firebase JSON. We've updated the circle to include it. Uh, we have changed the Angular JSON just to change the target folder that it gets deployed out to and Firebase when we ran the initialization has created this Firebase RC file which we could have a look into um, there's actually two you've got the Firebase JSON which is set up but this is a hosting project there's a disk folder it's going to use ignore some of these rewrite stuff that doesn't seem to page app and the Firebase RC is basically just saying what the project name is uh, actually that might be right I think it might be default we have to put in the CI I think it's the value in here. So I'm going to go change that CI before we run this. I think target environment, which is why we don't actually normally need to specify this. If you've only got default, it would use that anyway. Uh, it's default. 
Mm -hmm. You set these things up once, you get it working, you forget all about it. So, yeah, once you've got it set up, you know you might come back and tweak it slightly if you're making a change, but it's 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 rare. So if you've got a project that lasts you know six months a year, then you don't come back there. So we don't do this that often, although we do it for every project. It's just not done that often because yeah. how often do you start a new project? Yeah, once every six months probably, or if you're Eddie, once every three weeks. Dashboard Hub is on the eleventh version and. We're sticking with the version we've got. We're building on it. There is a prototype, so we are going to have to come back and rejig some things. But that's a different discussion. I will probably do a live stream on that because I've got to deploy into different environments for different branches. We do need to use this, the issue number that Elliot gave us. We, have we merged this one? Yeah, we've merged that one. Oh, please hold the mic closer to Andrew. Sorry, I will try and... Well, we're going to get another mic next time because I'm not going to try and shout louder. Elliot just has to remember where he's aiming his microphone. My aim's not so good. Okay. Two mics next time, definitely. 37, right, so that this is the issue raised by Elliot for the deployment, so I'm going to create a branch called, so I've just copied what I was writing, I'm going to create, just check out, uh, issue 37. Uh, but to be honest, you don't really need to hear what Andrew's saying, I don't know what he's doing, he's just bashing on the keyboard and it's just hitting some random keys. Just updating myself against develop as well, because I'm not up to date against develop. And he doesn't even know which branch you're tracking. Andrew, we're really tired. We're making mistakes. Um, people watching, please, can you, can you fix this? But see, even uh, people with 15 years, so if there's any you know, juniors and middleweights watching, going, oh, I've got, you know, ask a simple question, oh, I make mistakes, ask, oh, I need to ask for help. We still make mistakes. We still do it. So um, you know, if you ever get stuck on anything, do... Do ask for help. You know, let them know what you've tried. Do say, "Oh, I've tried this and it didn't work. This is the error I've get. What else? What? Uh, what else can I try?" Don't just say it doesn't work. I've got an error. Then yeah, it's a bit frustrating for the other person. But um, don't don't worry. Do ask for help. People usually want to help. Right. So uh, I had to do a couple of things. I I was using the name Develop rather than Master because normally we create a Develop and a Production branch rather than calling things master. So I was trying to get the wrong one, which is why the target was failing. Right. Uh, I needed to stash my changes because otherwise I couldn't do a pull. So I just did a stash, went to develop, pulled down the changes, updated issue 37 branch against develop and unstashed. And now I'm going to do that. Here. We raced to that quite quickly. Just to give you an idea, of, for those who don't know what stash is, stash is you can kind of, if you've got changes that you haven't committed yet, but you don't want to lose them, you can just kind of put them into a holding place, which is called a stash. Uh, and then you can do what you need to do, and then you can bring the stash back. And the command for that is git stash. We'll just take the, all the changes and stash it. Any untracked files will, will not be stashed, so it's only tracked files. And then when you want the, the changes back, you do git stash pop. If you do have a conflict or something goes wrong, you don't lose the information in the stash. So you could always um, abort what you were doing and... Um, yeah, you've still got the, the information in the stash. Or you can create a patch. Creating a patch is quite nice um, because then it gives you a file. So like you do git diff, but then you would pipe that to a file and later on you can reapply that patch if you need to. But we can do more detail, more details on that in the future. Yeah. So I'm just going over to the CI and we're going to see how this goes as a bit of a guess. We know that it was working fine to the build step, so this next one should go through okay. So um, it's rebuilding now again and then it's going to do a deployment. Yep, which it failed. failed but the build passed, so the, the code we know compiles and it works, it's just a deployment step. And usually the first time it fails with some token issues or some other issues in this situation. Um, right, okay. I, I put in Firebase token in the code for some reason, but I called it Firebase key when I created it. So I didn't thing. spot that, and uh, you didn't that's spot that either. I thought you were watching, Andrew. We, we, we're more than pair programming. We're, we're pair programming with 10 people as well, and we're still making mistakes. So, uh, again, it proves that we are code mortals, right? We're just mortal. There's no ninjas or rock stars or any of that bullshit words. Um, when people, if I walk into a room and someone you know, wants to speak highly of me and say, hey, oh, this is Eddie, he's our rock star. I'm like, please never say that. That is like BS. That is people trying to, you know, I don't know, big themselves up and inflate it. It's just, we're all coders, doesn't matter what level you're at, senior, middleweight, junior, it's, um, we're all code mortals. But the good thing is, once you've got it working, you don't have to worry about it anymore because it's gonna, every deployment will go through the same flow. There's no manual making these mistakes again. So yeah, we're all humans, mortals, and uh, yeah. 
once you've got the CI working, you're in the world of the machines and obviously machines never make mistakes, right? That's why we but trust AI and when t Terminator comes around and all the rest, it's all going to be good, yeah? But it's a bit different, right? It's uh, ignoring the A part and Terminator and Skynet. It's more, it's repeatable, right? So if it, if it passes and there's no changes, it, should, it will always pass again, always pass again. So it's repeatable and that, that's what we want, we want that reliability. So um, if we make changes, we want to know that the only thing that's changed is our change. There's nothing else in the system. So if you test something manually or deploy something manually, you could make a mistake. You could type a command differently. You could type it in the wrong order. There's various things you could do. Especially since most of us work in the middle of the night and we're very tired. So these kinds of protections are very good when you've got them working. Yeah. So now you can see uh, CI is building and uh, it's doing NPM install. So you see the different sections and then hopefully the deployment will work. Fortunately, it only takes a few seconds. So. I see the chat's really quiet. Any questions? Are we speaking too fast? Are we, have we made you all fall asleep? Uh, have we fallen asleep and we're talking gibberish? Uh, let us know. Okay, the build's going through. We're just about there, right? That's okay, the deployment. Good. Ready, yeah, countdown. Good. Three, oh, two, one. It's looking good. You've got some... Uh, some We've got all greens. All green. The question is, did we have it configured right? So when we go here, is there actually going to be a website? Let's go check if there's a website. And we can share a link with you and you can check it too. Which one do you want to use? We use the Firebase app one? Or? But they've got two links they give you now. They usually only do one. I'll go for this one. Yes, do you see that? We have a working website deployed. So now we're going to make a change and prove to you that now it's set up. It's so, so simple to do race forward. Not walk forward, race forward. So let me share that. Have you got the chat open? Can you share it in the chat? Uh, no, I don't actually have the chat open. I can share it to you on Slack. Yeah, and I can copy it in. So, I'm just going to share that in the chat now. And so you all can see that that is live. So this is the, the website. It's not a custom domain, but if you, did that share correctly? Yes. So if you click that, you'll see what we're seeing on the screen. So now, can someone make a code change? Why don't we ask someone to make a code change and we can review it and get it deployed? First of all, we need to get this PR up because we've now got a working piece of code. We need to get this merged. Is it not done yet? Now, there is one more thing to say before we do that, and that is right now, any branch would do a deployment right now. Oh, yes, it's true. We can lock it down. So we don't want that. So we can go over to the docs. Circles docs will tell us. Uh, possibly lower down in here. Yeah, so down in here, we can add various checks. So we can say when it's running a particular job, it needs to require a particular one to have passed first. If you've got a workflow going on, you can say... First build it, then test it, then deploy it. If you want to run things in parallel, you might say build it, test it, and also create a docs output, then deploy it. There's various ways you can run. We'll add some cool docs sometime yeah. soon. I'll show you how to do that. that. Um, but yeah, the one that I'm actually interested in is this filters one. So we want to only do a deployment. In fact, they've got basically, I can just copy this straight out, right? Because it's just filters for the branch master, because we haven't changed the branch name yet. We will change it at some point, though, because... Otherwise, I will get confused as we work on different projects. Um, but I can drop that straight in there to say only run this when it's on master. So when I push this up in a minute, you'll see this build deploy step isn't going to work right now, which means it's not really ideal. So I'm going to actually duplicate all of this. Um, ooh, paste. And I'm going to just have two steps in here. Now I'm going to have one that's called build and one that's called deploy. In build, we're not going to do the deployment stuff. In deploy, I'm going to have to leave them all in because I've not set up a workspace and we're not going to talk about workspace right now. But you can share the output from one step to another. Um, but that just requires a bit more setup to create workspaces. So we're going to keep it simple right now. We can have one called build, one called deploy. And same down here, I'm going to have a build and I'm also going to have a deploy step. And in fact, I can set this up to have a requires as well while we're at it. So requires, um, it's just dash, isn't it? Um, build, let me just double check in the docs. Uh, yep, so requires dash build and then filters on that. So now every branch will run the build step, which means that at least every branch we know the project still builds, but only when we go to master will it run the deployment step that comes after. Okay, so build, deploy, deploy requires build and will only run on master. 
So I will push that up as another commit. It's getting exciting. So while Andrew's doing that, if you can have a think of something you'd like to change on the page, um, even just changing the text, so therefore we can show the workflow of us approving the PR, us merging it, and it deploying, and it's not our change, it's your change. So uh, yes, have a look and make a change. Um, what have we got on the site? It says, welcome to Code Mortals. Can someone make a change and change Code Mortals? It says, well, welcome to Code Mortals, change the C to be a capital and space of mortals, so and the M's capital. Just make a simple change like that and let's get that merged in and let's demo that to you right now. Go, 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 go! My back requires someone to clone the project, set it all up. No, no, you can do it by the UI. Because you don't need to run the project and check let it me, and all the rest. Let me show very quickly for anyone not aware where you do that. Okay, so essentially, to make the change Eddie's talking about, in the source folder here, in the app folder there's an app component html file in here you will find the html for this page and as as he says you do not need to do anything other than click this pencil that's at the top so in this little header for the, for the display text you can click edit file this will bring up a very very simple editor within github and you can literally edit this so you could say remove all the links take that out i'm not actually going to commit this but Take that out, go to the bottom, and you can write your notes. Please try and use that conventional change log flow and reference the issue number correctly as well, because if you don't, we will have to edit the commit slightly. I can put, uh, there's a, in the market, GitHub Marketplace, there's a thing you can do a linter on the commits now, which is pretty oh awesome. Nice. So we can, we can add that on next time. Um, but yes, the, um, look at the previous commit messages and just use the, the same style. Yeah. So who, who's going to volunteer to do that, to make any change? You can delete the links. You can change the code mortals. Just one simple change. Don't do loads because we want other people to do some, but we want to show it deploys out, and then we're probably going to have to call it a day. Mm. Did you break the CI? Yeah, I just want to do the full while statement. Requ Travis is, is simple. The only bit I didn't copy and paste, right? <laughs> copy and paste development. You know, there's test-driven development, behavioral-driven development. It's copy and paste-driven development. That's what we should do. That's what we didn't oh, do. We got no, it wrong. I missed the colon on the end to say that there's a load of stuff to go on. My bad, I should have spotted that. Is everyone still awake? Chat's really quiet. So I'm guessing everyone's asleep. I mean, I can make the change if uh, no one wants to make the change, but I was kind of keen to include people. I was keen to give you the green um, the green tile on the GitHub for today. Um, or if you've already got a green tile, to make it a darker green tile to show you've got even more activity today. So uh, let us know if anyone wants to make the contribution. If not, I can do it. I'll just do it in the browser myself. So now if I go into the CI, it shouldn't be upset this time. If it lasts for more than about three seconds, it's good. Yeah, that's looking good. But what you'll see, so what I can do now is I can actually go to the workflows box on Circle as well. So you see this from previous workflows. In, in the previous one that was green, there was just a single build deploy step because we did it as a single one. But if I go to the most recent one that's currently running, you will see that, well, again, there's only a build right now because of we're on the branch. So it's not going to run the deploy step because we're not on the master branch. But when we go to master, you'll see build. Then after that, there'll be another box that says deploy because that is only on there. So that was succeeded. So if I can get a review on my non-existent pull request, I'm going to raise now. And this is going to say closes 37. Your pull request title looks a bit. Yeah, copy a, uh, another one. Generally, the first commit I do on a branch is probably the message I want to use. So I'm going to use that up here, and when we squash to merge this, that'll be okay. So I'll create that pull request if Eddie would like to review it for me, unless uh, anyone else is faster than Eddie. Oh, Venkatesh has done something. I want to review yours. I think Venkatesh just wrote a pull request. Oh, okay, cool. Nice. Updated the title on the app. Cool, so it's gone from code mortals to code The only thing I was going to say is it probably should be two words. So I'm going to just put a little comment into here. Stick a comment in, yeah, let's do this. So Venkatesh knows how to, do how to read the comment, how to put another change in. Who knows how to do all this? So there, this is cool. I will change this to say code mortals. There we go, and I can start a review. Um, I will 
then just request changes. Cool. So yeah, no, it's good, but uh, yeah, really, it should probably be two words in the title for code space mortals. Oh, another pull request has just come in. Ah, this is awesome. Love it. Everyone's doing it. We've got, we've got the same one, I think. Yeah, it's basically the same thing. So. Oh, now. wow. We, we already have one coming first. I put the what same comment doing? in, and whoever gets the, the fix in first will accept theirs. Okay, fine. Go, it's a race. It's a competition. You win your PR to get merged. But in the future, we'll make it more exciting, and then we'll do some swag. I don't know how we're going to send it. People are all around the world. If you're sending a T-shirt that costs the world, it's quite hard. Yeah, well, that's we'll figure that out. That's why we're not going to send that many of them out, right? But uh, yeah, we'll figure it out. Stickers, stickers. We we can uh, take you a picture of the sticker and send it to you. Eddie travels the globe on a weekly basis, so he can just do a personal delivery to you. You can meet me somewhere at some conference, and I'll give it to you there. <laughs> no, we'll figure it out. I'm sure we can get them to just send it directly to you. Yeah. Okay, I'm just reviewing Andrew's PR. Looks looks okay-ish. You know, it, it's not great. No, I'm joking. It's cool. So we can also see whilst those two other PRs that have been raised, they are going through with the little dots on there. That means that there is a CI build that would be going through. But chances are you took your branch before you had the CI code. So I'm guessing that this will never actually respond back because Circle doesn't know what to do with your branches. It's probably monitoring them, though. So if I was to go and have a look, I will probably see. Uh, do I see them? I know. No, Circle just doesn't know about the uh, the builds going through. Okay. Any updates? I see some commits coming in for the uh, pull requests. So there's some updates. Let's have a look. Should I check it out or are you going to check it out? Yeah, let me have a look at the other PR you've approved. Oh, you merged it. Did you squash and merge it? I hope so. I did not. I want no, you I to get more commits. Should I squash the future ones? Okay. Do squash and merge. I, th I hate having long commit histories. <laughs> I like the long commit history. Okay. Especially seeing as the, co the other comments I was putting in were very brief and not that descriptive of what they were doing. Oh, okay. That's bad. It's only really the first one that I do that with because I always squash and merge. Okay. We'll, we'll squash and merge next time. This is another reason when you do pull requests, you shouldn't really merge it yourself. You should give it back to the original yeah. person to merge it because they know what they were doing with it. You just want to review it to make sure that it's got what's needed in there. Yeah, one, once it's approved, the uh, the author of the pull request can then merge it themselves. Um, but the reason why I wanted to merge it was because I wanted that extra green tile or darker green tile for me. Don't tell Andrew, okay? But you get that just by doing the approval. That's what you get the mark you for. You get, um, and I wanted the mark for the merging because I think I get the commit as well. Oh, right, so that's where you want to put the commit. Oh, let me look at the I'm going to have merge pull request. See by Eddie. Eddie's done loads of work today. He's clicked that button and he's done loads and loads of work. If you need to go grab that. So. But yeah, otherwise we wouldn't be having these merge pull request ones in there. It would just be a nice, neat list without all the junk in there. Never mind. It's all, it's all okay, really. Some PRs have been updated. Shall we take a look? CPRs. Oh, look at this. There's three people all going for the title. All going for the title. It's a boxing match. Well, that one's correct. Now, do I go for the first one I saw that's correct, or do I go back and see? You do the one that's the... the, the start from the bottom. So this one has been updated and fixed. <sighs> yes. I think the one who got it in first, right? Yeah, exactly. It's a bit unfair otherwise. Yeah, they haven't yet updated those. But that's good. They had a go at doing it, which is great. And yeah, Elliot, whilst appreciate you got in there and you did the right thing, Oh, what about the commit messages? Let's check how quick that Elliot, yeah, yeah. your commit message is not looking That's so good. good point, Sorry. Yeah. Commit message but good change. And uh, the test yet. Good. The only thing I would say is, is the module. that I I and try to modulize them a little bit. So I'd probably yeah. say something like landing or welcome or something. Rather than updated app title, because it's not the description, it's the section of the app that you updated that you want to reuse over and over again. So it would be the module. Um, but it's not in the world. I think it's fine. Well, likewise, we can actually modify that slightly when we merge this. Um, what I was going to say is there's no issue related to any of these, so should really have probably raised an issue first. So I'm just going to yeah. I will put the issue in to go with it. So uh, update the page title to read code titles. And I won't assign myself because it's not me that's doing it. 
and that will create an issue number issue 46 so what we can do um, now the branch is protected and unfortunately these aren't going to run because I guess I'm and battle's both sides a bit so behind okay. Um, okay I'm going to turn the branch protection back off just temporarily while we do the stream but again these are things that will go back on no, that's awesome. Uh, thank you for all the PRs, by the way. Um, even if we don't, even actually for the GitHub contributions, even if your PR doesn't get merged, you still get the contribution. So if you look at your homepage on GitHub, you will see that you still get that green tile or, may, or it gets darker if, if you've already got a, a contribution for today. So raising pull requests is, is it just as important even if the pull request doesn't get merged. So for the ones who, who didn't make it in time, then uh, don't worry, you still get the, the benefit of raising that, that pull request. Cool, yeah, and what we can see is in the chat down here, on the, sorry, I'm covering my face. Oh, yeah. uh, in the chat down here, we can see that there was my comment saying, please can you change it? Uh, Ventikesh has responded, and I can now mark that as resolved. Uh, and now I can go back in and actually approve that pull request. I did say normally we should go back to the originator, but I'm going to just merge this. So I always choose from here. I choose squash and merge. This squashes the other ones. It also gives me an opportunity to actually update the message up here. Um, so it's grabbed the issue number from this, but that's not the issue number we were using. We created an issue, and it was issue number 46. So I'm going to just change the title on this to say 46. I'm also going to change the feature so that if there was a change log generated in the future, it knows what to call it and what should we say is this landing or is this more general because this is in the just the title for the page you could just say app or general or something but as long as you're consistent e in the future we make generic changes it's normally more obvious once you start to have modules and you've got a bigger project because you can see how you've broken your modules down and i'd normally use the module name there but we haven't really got modules so we'll call it app because that is the module name right now okay so happy with that it's still got notes in there about the commits that were made and the titles they were given, but this just then follows that conventional change log message, and I can just say squash and merge. Ooh, no signatures. Ooh, yeah, okay. Do I turn that protection off for now? But then in the history, it will always have those unsigned. So I think Venkatesh might have missed the discussion. Uh, I can't no, remember. He is verified on one of these commits. It oh, okay. That's interesting. You're right, he is verified on one of his commits. So Both of them do look to be verified. So why is GitHub Ooh. saying that there's... Thank you, we apologize. You, you are verified. Okay, it went through the next time. That may have been a GitHub blip there. So, yeah, retrying did go through. Awesome, yeah. you are verified, though. So that's very cool. And you must have 2FA as well. Or that just adding someone to the organization, maybe, is where you have two FA. Yeah, yeah, he's not on the organization as such, but he, ha he is now effectively a contributor for this. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, okay, and we can go and have a look at the CI, and we should, should be able to see that CI build. If we look at the master workflow running at the moment, we can see there's the build, the deploy step will come next. So I'll give that about a minute. And when we refresh the website, so right now it still says code models at the top. When we refresh it, this title up here should change, and I believe that's tied. Is it tied to both of them? Or is it just tied to this one? I can't remember. I have to check the code. I think it's tied to both. Uh, welcome to title. So it's tied certainly to the title in the app component. I don't think it's tied to the title on the HTML page. Though. You have to change that within the actual HTML. So the, the page title, the tab title, is not going to change. How's CI doing? Should be usually pretty quick. It's gone green. And it's got to deploy. Ready? Dun dun dun! Okay. Andrew broke it. It's cache. Try a different browser. Grab the link. Let me try mine. I don't trust yours. You need a new Mac. There we go. Yeah, I'm hoping a private browsing session is generally the way to do it, to go because unfortunately, yeah, things do cache. Where is it? Where am I looking? Oh, there. Just here. Code models has changed. So the previous one was lowercase, no space. Oh, the now live one, which I've got to go find the private browsing window, is uh, yeah. Woo! 
Woo! So you can see now any contributions are really easy once they've been uh, reviewed, merged, they deploy out. And yes, you might have more than one environment, but the principle is the same. I think it's a really, really good place to stop. Um, what do you think? Yeah, we've gone through setting up a new Angular project. We've set up the CI. We've set up the deployment. We've had a contribution to that. Uh, we do need to make the website look a bit nicer. We may actually work on that between now and the next stream a little bit, but we will try and do a recap just because we do need to get the Comor website up and running. Uh, we do. We, yeah, we could always do that. As, well, I can't do it as a separate project now because it's on the... Yeah, we will probably do a little bit of work, but we won't do any of the, let's say, the more interesting things like setting up Cypress and stuff. We'll hold off on those for a bit, yeah? Yeah, we want to we want to take you along with us on that journey on how to set up the automated testing for Cypress um, and how to do some more of the interesting things. Um, I think there are lots of uh, great videos out there already doing some of the I guess the more standard stuff. So we'll 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 do that maybe behind the scenes. If there are any contributions you want to make, just feel free to raise a pull request, raise an issue with ideas. Uh, we'll try and sort out the the labels on there. Um, but we have been going for almost an hour, almost two hours. And that's not including the 30 minutes before setup time live stream as well. Yeah, if you look, there is a live stream with the 360 camera with Eddie panicking as he goes around with a broken back trying to <laughs> put cameras and things together. Yeah, where were you? You were kind of playing foosball outside. We got caught by some German chaps outside. Yeah, they were like, oh, do you want to play doubles on the foosball table? Well, that's, that's a terrible accent. But yeah, we, uh, we joined them for a bit. And uh, yeah, they did actually beat us. But hey, they've also practiced a few times. But thank you everyone so much for joining. Uh, again, next week we will be live streaming on the on the Code Mortals channel. Um, let me uh, just quickly um, share that with you if I can quickly find it so that uh, you know where the live stream will be. So you can subscribe to that as well as my channel as well as Andrew's channel as well. Um, but I'm just going to share that. So uh, just to recap, we will do um, streams together on the Code Mortal channel and where we want to build up a community. I will still keep my channel where I go to hackathons, uh, events, and open source tips and those sorts of things. Uh, I will still keep my channel for, for doing that. I'm just trying to separate it a little bit um, so there isn't just, it isn't so, uh, so blurred. So what we should do is like a, a monthly thing for all the subscribers that we have. Let's do a little monthly raffle to give some of our swag away. Something like that might work. That's true. Well, I can't wait to get my hoodie, so I'm wearing... Um, uh, Eddie supports International Women's Day hoodie um, b and my one with my chibi kind of character that um, you can't actually see, I don't think. Um, but you've seen it before, I'm sure. Uh, hoodie was in the wash, I couldn't wear that. But we need to get some Code Mortal hoodies and some caps and some stickers and we definitely need to share them out. Um, everyone, thank you so much for joining the live stream. Uh, thank you very much for bringing your friends. Elliot, I know you shared it with your community and um, others did as well. Uh, Meshfin, thank you for joining and uh, thanks for your funny comment on the issues with the swag. We're definitely going to take that on board, so that was awesome. Uh, any questions, just put a comment in the video afterwards and we will, we will reply to those. And uh, yeah, that was awesome. Have a good evening. I'm going to get some dinner. I'm starving. And uh, we have a pipeline all set up to deployment. So that's, uh, that's awesome. So now we can make more changes and, and go really rapidly and put in the best practices of the automated testing and any other things you want to add as well. So um, thank you very much for all the positive comments and questions. We will see you next week, if not before. Monday, I think. Is that the aim? Monday evening? Let me check my calendar, see what events we've got on. So I'm trying to like kind of, you know, yeah, do yeah, some events. It'll be Monday or Wednesday next week at a similar sort of time. Let's have a look. Oh, my watch is buzzing. I think we have a session in about two weeks with um, some recruiters. No, uh, junior devs, isn't we it? We have uh, three awesome junior devs in about two weeks. And then about a week after that, we have uh, recruiters to talk about best way to get jobs and so forth. So let me just check. Um, so yeah, next uh, next Monday, I think. Yes, next Monday, because next Wednesday, I'm uh, giving a talk um, at uh, Flatiron School of London. Oh yes, next Monday, yeah, Flatiron. So uh, Monday will be our live stream, and then uh, we'll keep you posted on the, on the other things, which are a couple of weeks afterwards. So yes, awesome. Have a great evening, everyone. We will now stop the live stream. I gotta remember how to do that. Um, and uh, we'll all chat to you soon, catch you all soon. Open source coding, contribute daily, do it.
What do you think? Yes. I can say we've got a new project they can contribute to. So. Exactly. And now you know how. And then you can actually see it deployed. So it's not just going into the ether. It will be deployed. Thank you o very much. Open source out. <laughs>